Decision-making can be a challenging task sometimes. This especially happens when we are uncertain about the outcome of the decision we make or when we lack knowledge about the particular subject on which we are making the decision. Decision-making skills have become crucial in the present-day workplace with employees, managers, and team leaders working towards their organizational goals. Herbert Simon studied the traits of decision-making by people in administrative posts in organizations and published the decision-making theory in his renowned book, Administrative Behavior in the year 1947. According to his theory, decision-making involves three stages. Intelligence activity involves identifying problems in a company and working on a solution for them. This is the first stage. Considering that you have found a few different solutions to a particular problem, now is the time to evaluate each solution and list its pros and cons. This is done in the second stage also known as a design activity. Finally, when you have the solutions and their pros and cons, you will select the solution having the most positive outcome as the consequence of the decision you take. This process is pretty difficult as it requires a variety of skills such as being able to judge between solutions fairly, having a sense of creativity in solutions, and of course, prior experience in this field helps a lot. This stage is known as choice activity. Now that we know the three stages of decision making, let us see what other principles are followed by Simon in decision making. While formulating a decision there is a value component and there is a fact component to it. Values are the ethical part or rather, it is the moral beliefs of the decision maker. The moral beliefs of a person can be the correct ethics to the decision maker but could be wrong to another person. Thus, Simon in his theory wants us to reduce the number of values involved in decision making but not completely nullify it. Now comes the factual part which is basically verifiable information. This part of the decision can be tried and we can all commonly come to a conclusion whether it is right or wrong. Simon also pointed out that to make a decision that is rational, having a high degree of specialization, use of scientific tools, having an idea of the market and political institutions and finally having a huge base of knowledge is required. According to the theory, there are two types of decision-making in the organizational sector. Program decision and non-program decision. Program decisions are more like the daily routines that you put together on a chart but probably never follow. It's repetitive and of course, it is followed in organizational sectors. Whereas non-program decisions are those which are not repetitive and are unique for each problem, like maybe acquiring a new company to destroy your rivals or maybe improving your brand image, or it could be your own image too in case you wanted to relate Simon's theory in your personal life. Simon's contribution to the field of decision-making for organizations is immense. Before, decisions were only based on statistical data whereas Simon brought the focus onto the limitations of a human, psychology, and other factors like stress and the environment. So that was Simon's decision-making theory. If you learned something from the video make sure to hit like, and to stay updated on more organizational decision-making videos, hit subscribe to our channel, Explified.